we are a people who will allow you to rule and reign. We are submitted and yielded to your spirit. This day is yours, O oh God. And we decree and declare that it will not be church as usual. It will not just be another day. We will lift you. No matter what, we will lift you. You will reign. You will be glorified. We'll never stop fighting. We'll never give up. We'll never relent, oh God. We'll never pass on by, oh God. But when we reach out as extensions of you to your people, oh God, that's how you'll be glorified. That's how you'll be glorified. That's how you'll be glorified, oh God. It's not about us, but it's all about you in this house, this house that will never take glory, that will never take credit from you. This house will always give you the glory. This house will always give you the credit. You brought us too far. You brought us through too much. You took us so far. You took us through too much. Be glorified in this house, oh God. Let the chains fall off. Let the shackles fall off. Let any residue be cleansed in the name of Jesus. We look to you for our direction. We look to you for our peace. We look to you for our joy. We look to you, O oh God. Our eyes are fixed on you. Our eyes are fixed on you. Our faith is fixed like red, O oh God. We will not give up until we see that which you said would be, O oh God. This is that. 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 That the prophet spoke of everything that has been spoken. Every prophecy. Every word that has been spoken. Every prophecy. Every word that has been spoken. That has aligned itself with the will of God and the heart of God for this pastor, for this people, for this house, for those that have not come yet. It shall be so. It shall be so. It shall. No demon in hell, no devil on earth can stop what God is going to do. That that people have been looking for is right here. It's right here in this house with this people. And we will lift you up because where you're lifted up, you said you would draw all men unto you. Draw the backslider, oh God. Draw the lost. Draw the broken. Draw the hurting. Call order to the chaos. Call order to the chaos in their lives, oh God. We establish and decree order in this moment. Order with your kingdom. Order with your mind. Order with your spirit. Order in the name of Jesus. It all comes into alignment. All that was in this moment that was contrary to the will of God ceases to be right now in this moment. In this moment. Thought processes that were contrary to the truth and the word and the promises of God cease to be right now in this moment. Those who walked in and needed to experience change, needed to experience an encounter with God, it happens in this moment. No one leaves this house. No one leaves this place lacking. There is no lack in him. And whatever is not in him is not in this house. There is no lack. All provision has been made. All provision, mentally, emotionally, 
physically, financially has been made. These are not cheap words that we speak. But when we speak, we speak according to the mind and the will of God. And when we speak unashamedly with our trust and our hope and our belief in him, change happens. We will not walk in and walk out the same as we have always walked in and walked out unexpectedly on July 16th, 2016. He said, this is a moment. This is a moment. This is a moment in time. This is a pivotal moment in time. This is a shift with me. This is the shift that I have called. You may be looking. I'm not looking at you, so I don't know. But he said, this is a significant moment in time. When you say I reign, that means you relinquish control to me. You yield to me. And whether aware or unaware on this morning, he said, I've chosen to interrupt your normal train of thought. I've chosen to interrupt your normal flow. I've chosen to interrupt your way. I've chosen to interrupt your program for just a minute because it's critical. It's critical that right now in this moment you come into agreement with what I'm speaking to you because I'm trying to release something to you. I'm not doing this just for me, but I'm doing it to prepare your hearts and your spirit to receive something from me that you haven't received before be ready because this is not the first time that I will interrupt it's not the first time I have it's not the first time that I will it's not the last time that I will because there's much for you there's much that I have for you and there's much that I've been waiting to release over you my hand is over your house right now And in it is clenched the blessings and the release that you've been waiting for. But I'm looking for a people that will lift me up. I'm looking for a people that will say that I reign and then act like I reign. I'm looking for a people that will love not only me, but love all of those that I send to them. I'm looking for a place that I can purify, a pure stream that I can flow through. Pure pure vessels that I can work through. My hand is over your house and I'm waiting to release. Lift me up. Lift me up. Lift me up. Lift me up. For I am worthy to receive all glory, all honor, all blessing. And when you lift me up, one voice, one voice, one voice, one mind, one spirit, moving in unity with me, the release that you'll see over your house, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, that which I, your God, desire to do on your behalf will you worship me 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 do you love me do you love me do you love me do you love me me? have I been enough am I not more than enough am I not more than enough I, who has brought you this far, will be faithful to take you the rest of the way. I, who begun the good work in you, will be faithful to complete it. Will you call me faithful? Be lifted up, O God. Be lifted up, O God. 
Be lifted up, oh God. Be lifted up, oh God. Be lifted up, oh God. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. I love you so much. I desire to be with you so much. Can you just give me a moment? Can you just give me a moment? Can you just forget about everything around you? Can you just forget about everybody around you? You touched me this morning when you said I reign. So I've come to sit and do just that. Can you give me just a moment? I love you so much. Do you love him? I love you, Lord. There is nothing like you. You're my everything. You're my you love him. He knows you don't have it all together. He knows you're not where you want to be yet. He knows you're not even where he said you were going to be. But he said, could you just give me what you have? Just bring what you have. Let me love on you. Love on me this morning. And let me love on you. He loves you.
all over the congregation can you lift your hands I love you Lord you're my everything I love you Lord I love you Lord I love you Lord oh yes I do I love you Lord No music, just the voices. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you, Lord. You're my everything. Come on. Come on. Don't be distracted by that. I love you, Lord. Come on, can you sing it lifted? I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you, Lord. You're my everything. Come on, say it one more time. I love you, Lord. I Come on, just lift your hands all over the sanctuary. Come on, just lift your hands and give him a wave offering this morning if you love him. Come on, if that's your testimony, Lord, I love you. In these moments, it's not about your life. It's not about how right it is or how wrong it is. It's simply whether or not you love the Lord. Hallelujah. You're my everything, everything. I love you, Lord. I I love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And so, Father, we thank you for your presence that is so in this house already today. Woo. Thank you for a people that come in with a made-up mind to be in your presence and to worship you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this atmosphere that you've already created. And so in this moment, we do, we want to declare our great love towards you. We don't even want to ask you for anything. We just want to declare that we love you. <laughs> we just want to thank you, Father, because you've kept us through danger seen and unseen. Hallelujah. You kept us when we didn't even really want to be kept. Thank you for giving your angels charge over us to watch over us and to lead us and guide us. And so we bless your holy name today, oh God. And we say thank you. Come on, somebody lift up a thank you unto the Lord. Come on, lift up a thank you. Lift up a thank you. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. You're my everything. Come on, say, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Oh 
We honor you on today. Come on, don't get silent now. You're so worthy. Nothing we can complain about on today because you've been so good to us. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you're still worthy. So all we come to do today is to thank you. We come to put the focus back on you. We're not being distracted by anything that's come up against our day on today. You've shown yourself over and over and over and then over again. So, God, we have every reason to say thank you. When we inhale, we can say thank you. When we exhale, we can say thank you. When we look back over our life, we can say thank you. Father, you're wonderful. You do things so great. You do things with timing, oh God, and we thank you. Not how we wanted it to go, but it's how you wanted it to go, and it happened just the way that you wanted it to happen. So, God, we thank you on today for everything that we've encountered, for our ups and for our downs, for our ins and for our outs, oh, God, for money and for being, for having no money, oh, God. For every distraction, oh, God, that you've allowed for us to push out the way, that you've helped us to push out of the way, we say thank you. God, you've been good. I'll tell my testimony. You've been good to me. You've been good to my family. Chateau. Thank you, Jesus. You've created a way. When the enemy would to take me out like a flood, you lifted up a standard. Huh? Chateau. You lifted up a standard against him. Once more again, you did it again. You did it again. You did it again. You done it again. Within this house, we say thank you. Many miracles, signs, and wonders you've completed on this day in this place and so we say thank you kingdom grace is much appreciative of your of your glory we appreciate your presence we understand that you're not everywhere because you're not welcome but in this place you are welcome rest rule and abide in this place oh god have your way in this place this is not a show but this is worship unto you not unto the people, but unto you. Not unto the pastor, but unto you. Not unto the praise team, but unto you. Not unto the musicians, but unto you, oh God. Be glorified in everything that we do, say, and sing on this day. Be in this place. Rest on our pastor, oh God. Rest on our leadership, oh God. Place a hedge of protection upon her as she goes into places that no one else has gone before. We pray, God, now that you would give your angels charge, that you would be her rear guard, that you would protect her in the front and on the sides. Anoint her afresh, oh God, now. Give her a fresh word. We speak peace to her mind. We speak peace to her situations. We speak peace in her family. We speak peace in her finances. We speak peace in every situation that has come against her. We speak peace now. Do it, God, for if you do it for her, you'll do it for us. So we ask God now that you would anoint the head, oh God, so that everything under her would be anointed. We ask all these things to be done in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. 
I do realize that we have an order of service, but I just cannot today. I just cannot. I just cannot. Amen. I just cannot today. Y'all see this blessing? No, y'all, y'all don't act like y'all see. This. How many? We For a whole month, his dad had no clue where he was. Had no, had no clue what was going on. But because the saints prayed. See, some of y'all are missing this. Because the saints prayed and believed God. Not only is he here today, but he'll be here next Sunday. He'll be here the following Sunday. And we are believing God that when the deal is done, he will forever be in this house. Somebody ought to give God praise. Well, why should I give God praise? That's Jason's miracle. No, that ain't Jason's miracles. That's Kingdom Grace's miracle. And if you're connected to Kingdom Grace and God did that for them, then you ought to know that God is getting ready to do what you need him to do in your life. That's why you should praise him because he's showing you. Every person that's believing God for something in this house ought to jump up on your feet right now and tell God, thank you. Woo. Woo. Touch your neighbor and tell him you ain't seen nothing yet. Come on and tell him you ain't seen nothing yet. Tell him God's just getting started. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing. Come on, that person didn't believe it. Find somebody that act like they really came to church to get a word and tell them you ain't seen nothing yet. I hear Father saying, I hear Holy Ghost saying that bringing Jaden back was just the beginning of signs and wonders and miracles that's about to be released in this house. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. In the seventh month, somebody scream in the seventh month. In the month of completion, in the month that things are supposed to turn around, in the month, God hammer. In the seventh month, in the leap year, in the year of Jubilee, somebody ought to give God praise that my miracle is on the way. See, some of y'all scared to praise him in advance. Some of y'all, some of y'all won't praise him until you get it. But I got, I believe I got at least four or five folk in this house that are going to give him praise even while you're waiting on it. I believe I got praise him, Brandy. I believe I got some folk in this house.
on, go tell three people your miracle is on the way. Come on, tell them. Tell them your miracle is on the way. It's on the way. Some of y'all finna get an in spite of blessing. Woo! Some of y'all finna get an in spite of blessing. In spite of what you did. In spite of what they thought. In spite of how long you've been waiting. Just because he's God, he's gonna show himself strong. How we love you, God. How we love, how we love you, God. How we love you, God. Woo! Hallelujah. I know that's right. Somebody ought to be telling him thank you. Come on, do I have any faith-filled folk in the house that'll just open up your mouth and tell him thank you? Okay, watch this. Watch this. This next thank you. Because God says, I'm looking for some folk that don't care how I do it. Long as I do it. Woo! He said, I'm looking for some folk that don't care how I do it. They just know I'm going to do it. And if you are one of those people that's saying, God, I don't know how. I'm just glad that you go do it. I need you to jump up on your feet and tell him thank you. I don't know how. I don't know when. But I know you go do it. Because if you did it before, God, I thank you. Woo! God. It could have been me. Things be, 
every day by your power. You keep on keeping me. I just want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Hey, it could have been me. Outdoors with no food and no clothes. To let none of those things be And every day by your power You keep on keeping me I just want to say thank you I just want to say thank you I just want to say thank you
into the word of God today because he's given me a special word I, it's at least it's special to me and I pray it'll be special to you all amen 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 I love him so much today I love you I love you I love you Lord today because you In such a special way, that's why I praise you, I lift you up, I magnify your name, that's why my heart is filled with Such a special way. In such a special way. That's why. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. I lift you up. I magnify. I magnify your name. That's why.
chapter 1 verses 38 through 45 and Mary said behold the handmaid of the Lord be it unto me according to thy word and the angel departed from her and Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come unto me? For lo, as soon as thy voice as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed. For there shall be, somebody say shall be. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm ready for the performance. Now that person, now come on, y'all know how to do You got to find somebody else because that person ain't sure about what you're talking about yet. Look at somebody else and say, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for the performance. Point to our live stream audience and tell them, I'm ready for the performance. Amen. God bless you to those that are watching via live stream and those who are watching via Periscope. We thank God for you joining us each and every day. Now, I do realize I'm not confused. Praise team. Y'all can be seated. Awesome job today, as always. I thank God. Come on, let's give them a hand. Amen. As they go to their seats, so thankful for them. So thankful, so thankful. I'm going to get into some other stuff I'm thankful for, but let me preach this word really quickly. Amen. Most of the time when we visit this particular chapter and verses in the book of Luke, it's normally around Christmas. We normally deal with this around Christmas, Sister Glennis, because uh, we want people to understand the story around Christ's birth. However, recently, God gave me, using Dr. Matthew Stevenson, by the way, got to give credit to whom credit is due. I was listening to Dr. Matthew Stevenson on Periscope the other night, and, and God began to give me a fresh revelation from this scripture that we often use at Christmas. We celebrate, normally we celebrate the miracle of Mary's uh, pregnancy through immaculate conception, and we celebrate the miracle of Elizabeth's pregnancy in her old age. While both are a worthy cause of celebration, there's something else. Somebody say something else. 
there's something else that Father wants to show us out of this scripture. After the angel completed the pronouncement to Mary concerning her upcoming pregnancy, her response to the angel was, be it unto me according to thy word. I need y'all to hear that again. As a matter of fact, say it with me. Be it, be it unto me according, according to thy word. Now, that's going to be real important in just a moment. As a matter of fact, I know some of y'all are sitting there right now saying, now, what the world? Oh, overseer, it's, it's July. It's hot. I, don't, I didn't come to church today to hear a Christmas message. Well, guess what? You're not going to hear a Christmas message. Though, watch this. Though she had no idea how it was going to happen, Mary accepted the what that was getting ready to happen. See, y'all, y'all, okay, y'all already about to miss your shout. She, the angel told her that she was going to conceive a child and that his name would be Jesus. And all, the only other clue he gave her was that the Holy Spirit was going to come upon her. That's all he told her. Y'all know the story. Mary was engaged to marry somebody else. She was engaged to marry Joseph. But when the angel of the Lord came to her, sissy, with this pronouncement that she was going to conceive, her response to the angel was, be it unto me. I don't know how this is going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. But because you said it, Lord, be it unto me. Somebody say that, be it unto me. Here's one of the first things that Father began to show me out of this passage is that many in the body of Christ get so focused on the how. Okay. (laughs) We hear a word from the Lord and instead of just accepting what God said as truth over our life, we become all entangled in the how. We try to figure out who God going to use and, and, and when is it going to happen and, and, and how are they going to get it to me. And God, how is this blessing going to happen? But I came to tell somebody today that the key, y'all don't miss this please, the key to getting what God has for you is not in your ability to figure it out. Preach, Pastor, I think I will. The key to you getting what God has for you is wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in only one thing. Somebody please ask me what it is. I'm so glad y'all asked. God is looking for your availability. Oh, okay. See, since the end of June, it, it, Dr. Sprinkle, I'm telling you, when, when I was just watching this man's broadcast, and it was like the Holy Spirit just started. Do, 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 do. I got a Gmail, y'all. Y'all, 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 y'all know what a Gmail is, right? That's an email from God. <laughs> okay, yeah, so when I say I got a Gmail, I ain't talking about my, my ROC 731 at Gmail. When I say I got a Gmail, I mean he, oh, I'm sorry. I mean that he sent me a, a specific, he sent me this specific word for you all. He started, Patty, he made me look at this scripture again. I've always known this story. I've always known that the angel came and spoke to Mary. And I've always known that Mary left and when, she, when the angel finished talking and went and found Elizabeth. I've always known that when the baby in Elizabeth's belly heard Mary's voice, that the baby leaped and Elizabeth got filled with the Holy Ghost. I've always known that. But what I missed, Diane, was that he said, I don't need folk that can figure out the how. I just need some folk that will say, I'm available. Oh, this is going to be good news to somebody in about 30 seconds. You need to take the weight off of yourself of trying to figure it out and trying to understand it and trying to make it happen and understand that all you got to be is available. Somebody say it, be available. So since the end of June, watch this. Since the end of June, I've been talking to y'all about avoiding distractions. And I didn't realize 
that this was going to take, take this kind of a turn. But I understand now why God has had me talking to you so much about distractions. Because remember, I've taught you that if the enemy just can't get you to sin. See, there's some people in this congregation that sin is not an issue for you anymore. Y'all ain't saying nothing. There's some of us that really have been delivered from sin. There's some of us that don't do what we used to do. Okay, y'all act like y'all can't get it. There's some of us that don't go where we used to go. There's some of us that don't say what we used to say. There's some, oh God, I can't say that up in here. There are some of us who, there are some women that ought to be thanking the Lord that some of us got saved because now their husbands are saved. Okay, y'all ain't saying nothing. Don't y'all look at me in that tone of voice. You ain't always been saying. And so if he can't just get you with a sin issue, Dr. Sprinkle, he'll try to get you distracted. He'll try to get you caught up in foolishness and unnecessary stuff and stuff that don't matter. And when you look up, you'll be so far away from God, you'll be singing my favorite song. How did I get? Don't y'all act like y'all ain't never heard Deborah. (laughs) She said, how did you get here? Ain't nobody supposed to be here. I tried that love thing. And the truth of the matter is that that's how some of y'all live. Holy Ghost, how did you get here? I didn't intend to let you in that far. But can I tell somebody today that he's looking for available? Y'all please understand. Please hear what I'm I'm not saying. He's not looking for perfection. So for, for, for weeks now, I've been talking about, I've been talking about not giving in to distraction. But the Lord said, now here's the rest of the story. When they're, why, since they're not distracted, tell them to make sure they're available. Somebody say, I'm available. I'm available. Now I got to tell you, I would, I'd be less than a pastor if I didn't teach you this. Being available is going to cost you something. Amen. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, being available to God is going to cost you something. Matter of fact, look at somebody and tell them, ain't no free passes. The only thing that's free is salvation. You already got that. Everything else is going to cost you something. And the problem with the church is we got a whole lot of folk that don't want to pay their dues. We got folk that want to be overnight sensations. We got folk that want to get in a prayer line today and tomorrow get a briefcase and business cards and call themselves prophets such and much. Sit your end down and learn something somewhere. I got to tell y'all that being available is going to cost you something. It ain't going to be easy. For several months now, for several months, somebody say several months. For several months now, my life has been changing. And I'll be the first to admit, Deacon, that I didn't understand everything that was taking place in my life. God would, God shifted some folk out of my life. So, okay, y'all ain't saying nothing. He shifted some folk that I thought was going to be, I thought they was my ride and die. I thought they was going to be with me forever. I thought we had it like that. And God shifted them out of my life. And I didn't understand it first, Lee, because y'all know how we do. We run through our own little sanity check. I didn't do nothing to them. I didn't say nothing to them. I didn't offend them. I didn't do nothing but try to love on them. I didn't do nothing but try to be good to them. I lend them money when they needed money. I watched their kids when I needed to watch their kids. I fed them when I needed to feed them. So God, why are they out of my life? I didn't understand at first. Why people were being shifted out of my life. I didn't understand, Justin, why my desires were changing. I didn't, I didn't understand why stuff that used to appeal to me all of a sudden wasn't appealing. I didn't understand why, while everybody else, oh, I shouldn't say everybody. I, I didn't understand why, while most people were watching Empire, Holy Ghost would say, don't you turn that on. I have 
No understanding. Why I couldn't have a diet of love and hip hop. And because I didn't understand, y'all, please catch this. Hear me, Regina. Because I didn't understand the why, I thought there was something wrong with me. See, when you don't understand why God is doing the thing, you'll start questioning whether or not God still loves you or whether or not he's still for you. When God starts causing shifts in your life, and because he's God and he don't owe us no explanation, will he start just doing stuff in your life? If you're not careful, you'll become confused. And you'll start listening to the whispers of the devil. God don't love you. You did too much. He can't forgive you for all of that. God's still going to get you. You thought you could just run up in the church and ask for forgiveness? And everything is all right? Yeah. No, but those are the lies that the enemy tells. So look at somebody and say, don't believe the lie. Don't believe I didn't understand, Patty, why things were shifting and, and people were shifting out of my life and my desires were changing. Watch this. And I was put, hallelujah, in a place to have to do things that I've never had to do before. Right. Oh, it's going to get quiet up in here. A sure sign, Tammy, that God is up to something in your life is when you do what you would have done and it don't work. <laughs> when what you used to do quits working for you the way that it used to work for you, that's not your sign that God is against you. It's your clue that he's about to promote you. See, some of y'all are on the promotion list, but you just got so busy, caught up in the stuff. You got so caught up in the how that you don't even understand that your name has come up in heaven and God has found you worthy. Worthy? Me? As jacked up as I am? Yes, with your jacked up self, God has a plan for your life. Why can you say that? Because there's somebody else that's more jacked up than you. And God is looking for you to tell them how good he is. Preach, pastor, I believe I will. So I had to start doing stuff. Some of y'all know I went to the National Conference this year. I've been going to National Conference for 20, however many years they've been having them. I think I've only missed three. So I'll say I've been going for 20 years. I have never had to go to National Conference by myself. This year I had to go by myself. This year I had to hang out with me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, sometimes God will orchestrate it. He'll, he'll send people. He'll send people through the exit door. And you won't have any understanding that they had to go through the exit door. But guess what? In the midst of being by myself, I found a greater him. Oh, yes. 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 Now watch. When you make yourself available, he will start doing things. In your life. Now, now, okay, let me say this before I get to that. Even though, Ernest, I didn't understand what was going on in my life. Okay, watch this. And even though I didn't think it should be happening like that. <laughs> to, touch your neighbor and say, what you think don't, don't matter to God. He got this thing already mapped out. He already know what your end is. He already know where he trying to get you to. And you kicking and screaming and having pity parties and ten temper tantrums and all of that stuff does nothing to change the heart of God. Even in the midst of my not understanding, Tammy, and even in the midst of my saying, okay, I, I, well, why, God? Anybody ever have to ask him why? 
I ain't the only one, am I? I ain't the only one that's ever had, okay, thank you, Dr. Sprinkle. I ain't the only one that's ever had to just look up and say, God, really? I mean, really, God? It's just going to go down like that? Y'all know how we do? And, and, and for sure enough, when we, when we tithers, because we got confused and thought that tithing was going to exempt us from everything. <laughs> really, God? I'm in church eight days a week. Really? <laughs> I'm preaching and, and praying and testifying and doing fasting, coming into church on my off day, laying before the Lord, meeting with people. Really, God? Y'all, y'all, y'all. y'all. But in the midst, Roosevelt, of it all, in the midst of all of the changes, Shanita, the one thing that I always had was his peace. Even when I caught myself trying to get frustrated, Diane, because there were days it's like, now listen, I know y'all don't talk to God like that, but you know, sometimes you lose your mind and be like, uh, God, really? Listen, you're going to have to do something. How you gonna tell God what he gonna have to do? That's a, ain't that crazy? Right, he knows our heart. Thank God he knows our heart. So 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 if if okay, here it is. If change is going on all around you and stuff is, is going on all around you, but you still got a calmness in your spirit. That's your sign that God is up to something. In your life, look at your neighbor and say, God is up to something in your life. I finally got to the place, y'all, that I decided that whatever the reason for these changes were in my life, God was behind it, and Romans 8.28 was still true. It was going to work for my good. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell him, whatever you're going through right now, if you in God, it's going to work for your good. I'm almost done. Somebody say available. Matthew 6.26 hit me right in the forehead. I don't know if y'all ever had a word just kind of hit you in the forehead. Matthew 6.22, excuse me, hit me in the forehead. Watch this. It says, the light of the body is the eye. (laughs) I'm going to say that part again. The light of the body is is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. Let me break that down. The light of the body is the eye. And if you stay focused on what God has for your life, then as you stay focused on what he has for your life, then your whole body will become light. But if you allow, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Um, mm, mm-mm, they ain't gonna do it. Come here, Jalen. And let me see, I need one more. Come here, Shania. Okay, I need you over there. Right there. I need you over there. Okay. Now, when ain't she a doll, baby? (laughs) And in him, handsome. Okay, now, on the count of three, I want both of y'all to start doing jumping jacks. Y'all know what jumping jacks are? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, now watch. I'm trying, I'm staying focused on God. I can't stop to see what He's doing. I can't stop to see what she doing. I got to stay focused on what he has called me to. This right here, what they was doing. Okay, I got three people that got it. This was sent to distract me from my purpose. But even though I know there's something over there, I know there's something going on, I hear the noise of the distraction. If I could stay focused. Yeah. 
And, 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 and God said that's what's going on for many in the body of Christ. Yes, there's stuff going on all around you. All around. Finances. Relationships. Family crazy. Family issues. Health issues. Work. Yeah, don't let me leave that out. Because some of us got to work with folk that we think should be getting a check every month because they crazy. <laughs> we got all of that stuff. We got our, our past swirling around us. Any of you, y'all know that your past, it like to talk. The enemy like to talk to you through your past. He like to remind you who you used to be and what you used to do and who you used to do it with. And sometimes he'll remind you how good you were at it. Sometimes he'll remind, thank you, Holy Ghost, he'll remind you how much you enjoyed it when you was out there. And then he'll let you come into church and folk in the church getting on your nerves. And, 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 and so you just start thinking, well, shoot, I had it better. Look at somebody say that the devil is a lie. <laughs> somebody say it available. Whew. So what I learned, Patty, and here's why I say 622 kind of hit me in the forehead because it helped me to understand that all of the other stuff that was going on in my life was 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 the enemy's attempt to derail the plan of God for my life. Watch this. You got to celebrate when God starts decluttering your life. Amen. Mary didn't know how Father was going to do it, but she made herself available to what he wanted to do. The result, God, the result of her making herself available was a promise. For there shall be a performance. Oh, God, y'all. There shall be a performance of those things which were told to her. Overseer, what that got to do with me? I'm glad you asked. God said, tell your people when you get to church Sunday that there's about to be a performance. For every person that made it through the noise. For every person that made it through the distractions. For every person that didn't give up, cave in, and quit. For every person that did not buy the lie of the enemy. For every person that will say, Lord, I'm available to you. There's about to be a performance. What is he going to perform? He's going to perform everything that's been spoken. Yeah. Now either I got a whole bunch of people that ain't expecting nothing or my mic has stopped working and y'all can't hear me. So I'm going to try this again. For every person. Thank you, Jason. Come on, let's go to work. For every person that made it through your last storm for every person that did not give up cave in and quit for every person that's held on to the name of Jesus no matter what it looked like for every person that has stood strong in your faith for every person that trusted God even when you couldn't trace him for every person that trusted him when you wasn't sure where he was taking you there's about to be a performance He told me to tell y'all today, this is your breakthrough season. Come on, I need every person to stand. He told me to tell y'all today that this is your breakthrough time. 
He told me to tell y'all today that because you persevered and because you went through some stuff and because you withstood your name being drugged through the mud and because you stood when they lied on you and because you stood when they treated you bad and because you stood when they turned their back on you. You didn't know it at the time, but it was God decluttering your life. Just like every so often, some of, some of the women, I don't know if men do this, but some of the women will go into a closet. Come on, somebody. And you have to start getting rid of some stuff. You got stuff in your closet that don't fit. It might be the right size. Oh, y'all better catch this in the spirit. It might be the right size, but it don't fit the you that you are now. So you begin to discard some stuff. And I came to tell somebody today, quit tripping and just know that God is decluttering your life because he's got a performance that he's trying. There's a mouth. There's a mouth. There's a mouth. There's a mouth. To be a performance. Don't get distracted. This ain't your season to give up caving and quit. This ain't your season to let stuff work your nerves. This ain't your season to beg people to be with you if they don't want to be with you. You need to go on and pronounce the benediction. Y'all know what the separation benediction is. May the Lord watch between me and thee cause we bout to be absent one from another this ain't the season to be moaning and groaning crying and throwing fits but this is your season to understand that God is about to perform some things in your life if you believe it I need you to shout yes come on I need you to scream yes But I gotta go back. There's about to be a performance. Come on, go touch three people and tell them there's about to be a performance. There's about to be a performance. There's about to be a performance. There's a oh yeah, yeah, oh shut up. There's about to be a performance. But here it is. This is why I had everybody to stand. Because the key to the performance, hear me. The key to the performance is your availability. God told me that when I finish this message today, to open up the altar to anybody that know they've had some stuff going on that's been cluttering up their lives. If that's you today, I want you to come. It might be noise from family. It might be noise from coworkers. It might be financial situations. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stuff happening now. It, 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 God is trying to declutter. Don't make the mistake of inadvertently fighting against the plan of God because you're trying to hold on to what was. Can I just tell y'all, I was absolutely guilty of that because I thought I had it all figured out. And I just knew, see, okay, here it is. <laughs> when you have poured and poured and poured into people, you expect to get something back. But here's what the Lord said to me, and here's what I have to share with you today. The, reap, the principle of sowing and reaping does in fact work. But where we error is, we expect it to come back from the same people we gave it to. So because I had poured and labored and poured and labored and poured and labored, I made the mistake of assuming that certain people would always be with me. And I was guilty of, of waiting. I'm crazy. <laughs> crazy. 
instead of enjoying what God is doing right now, I'm waiting on them to come back. And the Lord said, I got you. If you could just learn how to let go of what was and trust me for your shall be. And so finally, somebody say finally. Somebody say finally. So finally, I just said, okay, Lord. And when I let it go, y'all, he started opening doors. People are contact. I, I, this, I'm, if I'm boasting, I'm boasting him. People are contacting me now to do stuff in 2018. They said we don't even want to run the risk that your calendar gonna be full, so we want to get you locked in now. Now that's y'all have to understand. That is God. I am not deserving of all of that. Don't be like me. Don't spend years holding on to something that God done removed. If it's out your life and you're in God, be at peace. And trust God. Because here it is. I thought everything I had sold and parted and shared was going to come from people. And it is. It just didn't come from the people I thought. And so once I let that all go, guess what God started doing? He started sending new people. Can I tell y'all? Over these last few I came off that job in April. Somebody called me about a month ago. She said, the Lord told me to bless you financially for the next eight weeks. She said, so for the next eight weeks, I'm going to give you X amount of money. But can I tell y'all, can I be honest and tell y'all that that didn't happen until I let go of what I thought. So now I have no regrets. I'm thankful for every person God allowed me to pour and impart to. And I pray God speed over all of them that they become everything God. But if they never serve me again. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands at the altar because what he wants from you all today is your availability. But now in saying I'm available, you can't say I'm available as long as you do it like this. Thank you, Diane. He don't need our help. He got all by himself. Father, I've done and said everything that you gave me to do and say today. And as a result of your word, these, your people, have come to the altar today. And they're saying to you, Father, I'm available. They're saying to you, Father, I'm not going to fight against you decluttering my life anymore. They're saying to you, Father, I'm not going to be distracted any further. We're saying to you, Father, that we trust you with our lives. The truth of the matter is, some that are standing at this altar, we are really tired of trying to run our own lives. (laughs) We've tried it, and in some cases, it just didn't work out too well. So, Father, we say to you today, we are available. Ah. The song says, my storage is empty. My storage is empty. And I am available to you. Ah. 
Hallelujah. That's what we're saying to you, Father. And so even as we stand at this altar, we give you permission, Holy Spirit, to clean us up and to remove from us anything, Father, that has served as a distraction. We give you permission today to set our lives in divine order. We want what you want, Father. (laughs) We know that you are a good, good Father. You are perfect in all your ways. And we want to walk in your ways, oh God. So we ask your forgiveness today. Forgive us for the times that we've tried to run our own lives. Forgive us for seeking things outside of you to please ourselves. Father, we refocus today. Because we understand that there's about to be a performance. (laughs) And so I decree today for every person that is truly saying I'm available to you that you perform every prophetic word I decree the release today and the manifestation of every prophetic promise that's hanging over the lives of your people I decree today that as they empty themselves out today that you will cause them to leave this altar knowing that there's about to be a performance Father, thank you. My prayer is that every person at this altar will know the peace of God the way that I've learned it. And be able to say, I love my life right now. That's my prayer that every one of these at this altar will be able to say, I love my life. Because my life is hidden in you. Father, your word is already declared that your word will not return to you void. And so we believe that because these people, your people, came to the altar in response to your word that you're going to perform the very thing that they've been waiting on. And like Mary, we're not going to get caught up in the hows. We're not even going to get caught up in the who. We just going to let you be God (laughs) and let you do it the way you want to do it through who you want to do it through. So we don't even try to tell you how to bless us. We just say thank you for blessing us. Come on, somebody tell him thank you. Come on, somebody tell him thank you. One more time, tell him thank you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Show somebody some love before you go back to your seat. together if you receive the word today come on don't pity pat him if you really receive it hallelujah there's a bow and I'm ready anybody else ready for the performance anybody else ready God bless you live stream we thank God for you let us know if these broadcasts are being a blessing to you we thank God for you 
Hallelujah. Anybody glad you came to service today? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm ready for the performance. Hallelujah.